tell you. Now recording. Now recording. <laughs> yes. I really want to fight Craig. <laughs> Why? You don't know. You just something about something about that face. Mm? Look at him. Look at that stupid spot. I don't know, bro. I'm just saying shit. <laughs> yeah, because she always has a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people don't. But then when they edit the video, they quickly make a PowerPoint and just. I saw it. that. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, no way. He just added, <laughs> bro. You thought you could fake having a presentation, mm -hmm, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did yes. he use Chat GPT? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that had me laughing when I saw it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because he did have a press because he forgot the presentation and then he just quickly added it <laughs> into the video. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I if know, you weren't funny. there, you you don't know. Like it looks real. Don't they don't know what? Yeah, slowly but sure. <laughs> Lately, I am really into the staying safe together category, mm -hmm. trying to help myself and everyone yeah. to <laughs> shield, protect, and attack, and spot, and stop. <laughs> okay, I'm starting. First of all, I uh, made like a real beginner-friendly thing, because uh, there are very much new people uh, in the server. So, first we start with why we need the shield. Because of this image, you see, <laughs> there are some uh, people and some other beans who might try to attack you. Uh, and also, if you are not really into the GFL business, you, like shielding is very important because there are lots of people in this earth who are like energy vampires and are not even aware. And if you are an empath especially, there's always an energy exchange with people. So you might get, feel like you are drained because you feel other people's emotions as well. So shielding will help you keep your energy within yourself so nobody is st stealing your energy and also it protects you from other people's negative energy so you will feel more at peace and especially if you're a gfl agent of course <laughs> there is more to deal with so shielding is like a must especially for us and you can also not just shield yourself but you, you can also shield others like your family friends your loved ones and your home and your maybe workplace, wherever, whatever, <laughs> you can always put a shield. Let's start with how to make shields. So first of all, get in, in a meditative state, so you're relaxed, not disturbed, and you're going to use your own energy coming from your center, your heart chakra, and surrounding you. And most people make it like a bubble, but you can also make it like other shapes, like a pyramid, star, merkaba, anything. You can also add other shapes later on. We are just imagining an energy coming from us. And it can be any color. It can be white. It can be rainbow. If you, you think your aura has a, like a special color, your, like your image, you can imagine it's like having a color like that. And once you make the bubble, this energy build, you got to fill it with light and release all the negativity so it's not inside your bubble and if you see any cords as attached to you just imagine like all of them cutting and away and leaving <laughs> after you make this bubble or other shape whatever whatever you want layering uh, layering it making multiple layers of a shield will really help you make it more strong so as you are making your shields building layers you can consciously Say out loud or just, you know, put the intention of saying like any negative low vibration entity who is not serving my highest good is not welcome. And I forbid you to come close to me and my, into my shield. And you can also say any positive high vibration be my guides, my angels who are here to help and guide me are welcome and they're allowed in my shield. As you imagine the shield growing, growing, like you can imagine it go as far as you want and you fill it with light and love and imagine another layer coming from your center so now now that you are cleaned you are in your own energy with the shields one of the most important thing is the cloak become invisible so you're making yourself and your protection shield invisible so you won't get attention you know from the uh, unwanted people <laughs> And what I like to do when cloaking, you can just imagine you becoming just this energy field. 
Like, imagine yourself becoming invisible. And while here, you can also start using elements, which we are going to use a lot <laughs> in this, uh, because it's something recently that I learned. So if, like, you can choose one or mul multiple elements, or light or darkness, whatever you like. And you can say, like, if it is water you are most connected to, you can be like, I am water, and imagine yourself becoming like a wave, like a drop of water. Or you can, like, if it's air, you can be like, I am wind. And you can also mix the elements together, like fog is something both water and air, kind of. Or like a cloud, or if you like fire, you can become like, imagine yourself becoming like a fire or smoke. Or if it's earth, I am like, I'm dust. <laughs> By the way, you can also, if you have a dark power, like darkness does not equal to evil. We all learned that. So you can also use your darkness to block yourself. It is something actually we did when I was a vampire. We were like, I am a shadow and a smoke in your eyes. I am can a I ghost. <laughs> yeah, sure. Could you like say I am mist? Yes, you can. I mean, there's lots of different things you can see, like anything invisible thing you can use. You can use light, shine. <laughs> or whatever elements together. So now that you are, you choose the element and you're like connected to element, now you can actually use that element as a layer of another shield. So like you can make like a water globe around you or like fire or smoke or anything, like any element in any shape. You can literally build like a pyramid with rocks. <laughs> And, or you can make like a storm. You guys know Avatar, like how he, when Aang goes into Avatar state, he makes this um, windy air globe around himself. You can make like something like that. So it is very much all up to you. Like it can be any element, any shape. And if you're like connected to other things, like there are wood, crystals, ice, you can make like something uh, both protective, defensive, and you can make some something offensive as well, like like storm <laughs> around your shield using crystals. Well, I just you can use the image of a crystal, like imagine like a crystal shape globe around you and stuff. But if you wanna use it like a tulpa, like a crys actual crystal for protection, mostly black colored crystals are very very good. I also put up other. Crystals there as well, very much known to use for protection, like obsidian, like tourmaline, labradorite, onyx, amethyst, jasper, quartz, um, like smoky quartz, also very good, selenite and shungite. So I used um, jasper a lot, and then I switched to amethyst lately for protection, and it has actually been very good. So I recommend. And I also wanted to add the evil eye bead. We call it like Nazar. It's like glass actually. It's not crystal. But I just wanted to add like a little note. You can use the symbol of the evil eye. Or just the actual <laughs> like a evil eye bead. For protection against the you know envious people. Because evil eye is a real thing guys. So using metals and mirrors. When we are using our energy or light as light and stuff so i hear like lots of people actually like to use gold i mean you can actually use like a real gold gold like a, how you use a crystal because it is a very high frequency i also like to use silver a lot with my crystals so metals are very similar to the crystals actually and you can like use their energy like i see so many people use like golden lights and like gold flakes around uh, their light to help it like strengthen, strengthen the uh, vibration frequency. And um, let me check so, some of you guys, what you guys say. Um, you use ruby and silver. That's cute. You know, I also saw some people using ruby for protection as well. Kind of similar to Jasper, I guess. And mirrors. You can also add like a layer of mirrors around your shield as well to reflect. because. There is also like a mirror spell some people do, but you don't really have to do like a spell thing. You can just put like mirrors around your shield so it becomes like this reflective thing. So if someone tries to attack you, send a negative energy, it reflects to them. And it actually works very great. Yep. Using mudras. So when I am building shields, I really love to move my hands, my body, and it's kind of hard for me to just stand still in general when I am meditating. So I like to do some mudras, and sometimes I don't really do like a special known like mudra. I just like move my 
hands and shapes like i don't even think about what it what are they and i just call it like oh i am doing like energy bending so it just comes to me naturally sometimes uh something i like to do and actually moving your body around your hands on just your whole body like stretching and stuff while doing meditation is actually a very good thing because it helps move the energy better and i just uh, want to add some little known mudras like Abaya, this one actually very good for protection. Yes, initiative, <laughs> intuitive, uh, how do you say it? Intuitive movements. Just trust yourself and it comes to you naturally. You don't have to think about it much. I mean, I definitely, like, this is just the hand movements you do. Like, it kind of, it, like, it reminds me like you are doing, like, stop. I say no to evil. <laughs> I put my <laughs> Oh, I don't want to make fun because this is like a very important mudra for Buddhist people. So I'm sorry if I offend anyone. I'm just saying like I like it. <laughs> okay, so this one is very known for protection and fear. Like it stops and releases your fears. And daya is helps focus. This is karana. <laughs> Um, protects from negativity. Uh, Vitakra, it, this is very well known for like cultivating energy. Um, bum, bumis Parsha, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> this is very grounding and grounding is very important also. Varada opens the mind. Uh, cosmic brings balance and harmony. Uh, Dharma Chakra <laughs> balances energy and Vajra Self-confidence also gives energy. I'm sorry for butchering the words, but I'm not actually so sorry. <laughs> Using runes. So adding protection sigils and runes can also help strengthen your shields and energy fields. You can also use protection runes in your home to make sure no unwanted guests come to visit. <laughs> I just uh, put like very much known classic runes for protection. Algus is very very much like for protection like a shield uh, it also symbolizes like higher self and uh, defense against evil uh, otala rune mostly known for shelter home but also it's like somewhere safe safety and ingwas uh signifies divinity family love and also freedom and stuff and if you like mix mush all three of them together this is like a very famous <laughs> very well known protection rune and I also put this one. This is actually angelic um, rune. But there are some others like this. These are shadow hunter runes. Like you can just use any rune. I didn't want to make uh, I, this like a rune class. So I just put like simple stuff. But you can always uh, just put like a basic thing or just you can make your own rune like a symbol thing to add. Yeah. And using sacred geometry. If you feel a connection towards these sacred geometry shapes you can all of course always add like a layer of another shield around you in these shapes or you can like imagine yourself in the middle of a Merkaba or something so there are actually lots of different sacred geometry shapes i also put just the most known ones here so if you feel connection with any of them maybe um, you can start using them so egg of life is like rebirth Fruit of life is like unity and movements among the worlds. A Metatron's cube, this is very connected with uh, Archangel Michael, connection, uh, connecting to divine power and stuff. Um, Vesica Pisces, union of opposites. And it is also like cosmic mother, or some people say this is like connection of femininity and masculinity. Seed of life is beginning of the existence, and this is like seven circles so if you can if you love the seven <laughs> you can also use numbers and stuff uh, germ of life is representing duality tree of life is connection to everything merkaba is light spirit and body this is uh i really really recommend using merkaba by the way this is greed of life space and time in harmony flower of life cycle of creation and creation of everything and vector equilibriums uh, this one is like a fabric of the universe and this one is like balance and harmony of the universe while you're doing your cleansing energy work and shields for protection you can of course always ask for help and get help so if you are working with a deity or if you have a religion you can always pray ask for help whatever you believe and 
if you are like working with an angel, you can of course always ask them for help. And you don't even have to like work with an angel. We all have guardian angels and they're just like waiting for you around you, always around you. <laughs> you can always ask them for help and you don't even have to like um, have a connection in the past with the angel you can just ask help right now and they will always come and you can also use like image of an angel as well or like most of us actually here has like angelic past lives and like if you are yourself an angel and if you have such powers from your past and now you can always use your own angelic lights to clean energies and build shields as well and some angels re in the server i know uh, they use their wings to cover them themselves up for protection guards and guides so you know we all have guides our past lives and stuff so you can of course always ask them for help as well and especially if you have like uh, most of us probably already have some gfl member <laughs> guides so you can like ask them for help like getting devices because like there are protection devices made by the mostly arcturians in the gfl and you can like ask them or you can just get them yourself as well if you are working with the gfl you can be like oh gfl can you send me some protection device because there are <laughs> protection devices and they can help you put on yourself and loved ones and activate them by the way i have protection devices as well if anyone here <laughs> wants <clears throat> so and you know we are guides and guards are not all humanoids we also have animals like spirit animals familiars whatever you call it animal companions and i know some people here also have like dragons they are amazing at protection if you ask them to like i have worms and i always like work with them i send them around uh, myself and around my shield so you can uh, get help from your animal guides as well now elemental guards so now this is the fun part guys <laughs> You can also make yourself a guard around your shield with your own energy. You can make them just with energy. So they're just like energy beam, etheric, or you can make them elemental. You can make them from water, air, earth, fire, like crystal, metallic, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want. And it can be any shape, like humanoid, animal-like, like whatever. You can just make them, but they will not have a, like a soul really uh, they will just be like an extension of you made by elemental or or your energy you can program them and command them and they will just like uh, listen and do they're like 1d beings <laughs> you know how we say humans not right now like 3d animals are 2d these are like 1d beings kind of kind of like that golems these guys i love them you can make yourself like an elemental golem they don't really have like a body uh, like a real humanoid or animal they're just like elemental golems and you can put them uh, somewhere just you can put them around your shield or you can just put one in your home in your school in your work and they are very powerful and you can like give them your abilities magic like program them to, so they can do attacks and stuff as well like you can uh, command them like if like a low vibration evil being comes near this place you are going to attack them or you can you are going to deal them you're going to report them you're going to like you can just command them and they're like just elemental beings so they don't have a soul but they are also not immortal so if someone attacks them they can like not exist anymore <laughs> but their essence will go back to the element they come from or if it's just energy like your energy will be back to you but you can just make them again it is they are not like human conscious beings they are just elemental beings how do you know when they die well when you look at the the place and they are not there anymore <laughs> yeah you oh. can just feel it if like you because you will have a connection with them because you're protecting them like for example i literally have like a rock golem in my house uh, i give him orders and i command him and he's just like like a guardian waiting and i also like put i especially put this uh image because like you see how there are runes on him i also have runes on my golem as well so it is also protected um like you can make it as powerful as you want by giving your energy and 
programming it. So you have to... No, you can't make them right here, right now. When you're building your shields, you can make them. Yeah, yeah, you visualize and you use elements and your energy and power. And you can make them, put them in places. So kind of like Cash is a... Yeah, he has guards and he has like little crystal or like little um, tulpas to symbolize them. It's kind of like... Um, you have... Okay, if you are bad at visuals, I really recommend like go into internet, Pinterest, whatever, and get like these images, pictures, and you can make like a mood board of all these things. And that way you can like visualize better because sometimes when I'm low in energy, I also have a problem with visualizing a lot. <laughs> and that's when I try to like draw myself stuff so I can see better or I just go into pinterest and find some photos that look similar or you can use ai to create images as well okay so symbols and images so whatever you are most connected to or whoever <laughs> whatever is you feel like most resembling your power you can always like add a symbol like give a symbol to your shield and uh, it can be like a religious symbol or it can be like your uh, gfl connection it can be like your star seed uh, heritage like a lion symbol maybe it can be like literally anything <laughs> anything any shape you can add to your shield and you can also like use that symbol to activate your shield as well because you know once you make your shield it's kind of like permanent but it ca it can get so you gotta update it upgrade it and coding so uh, you can also, like like a symbol, you can give a code to your shield and you can just use the numbers uh, to reactivate your shield as well. And you can also use angel numbers and stuff. Like, for example, number four is a great symbol for protection. And there's also one, 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 one and four, 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 four. <laughs> and I also wanted to add some little angel number codes. If you are, if any of you are interested that you can use. In your shields or in, i just also put like other ones this is all about the shields now i can take questions um do i need do i need up my third eye so can you repeat the question i didn't hear it well uh, do you need my third eye you don't need your third eye but you already sorry i didn't want to cut you but like your voice get cut off i heard you ask that if you need your third eye, you don't need your third eye. You just need your energy. And if you are bad at seeing it, uh, you can just try to feel it with other senses. Or you can say like out loud, command it. You can like write also. But if you are not really connected with your third eye, it does not mean that you don't have it. <laughs> we all have our third eyes. Well, thank you. Of course. Um, I'm very new. I'm very new at the stuff, but my third yeah. eye isn't full open. It. It's okay, we all gotta start somewhere. I'm glad yeah. you're here I'll now. Some support or some words of um, support to the person that's having trouble visualizing. Um, I think touching your body, um, like feeling where your bones are in your body when your eyes are closed and visualizing like touching your hip bones, touching your arms, like really touching your body and visualizing your skeleton is a great place to start because it's something that's physical and inside of you. And it's also something you can feel and you can simulate easier visions around. So that's where I started was I was taught to touch my body and feel where the, where like the edges of like my bones, like my hip bone, my knee bones, my toe bones, and like visualize those bones inside my body. Cause that's like the easiest thing to do before visualizing things outside of you yeah thank you that's a good advice actually thanks for letting me share yeah that's brilliant we gotta touch our skin <laughs> i mean touching yourself feeling yourself your energy that's really good advice thank you elia do you wanna join and give some tips on how we do it maybe oh sorry she can't join right now well anyone wanna join the voice Oh, and, and I just have to say the easiest bones are your jaw bones and your skull bones and the bones of your brow, your brow bone and your cheek bones, like touching your face and visualizing your skull. That's like the easiest bones to like feel and access on your body, I think. But do you want to tell us how you do your shields? 
Oh, yes. So I was kind of sharing a bit about it earlier where I was saying one of the ways to visualize yourself as invisible in the room, because it's like, I think visualizing non-existence is like, it can be kind of advanced for some people, but I think what helps me, the simplest thing is you kind of create a clear, a clear room. You make the room as clear and organized as possible so that there's less random things in the room. And then you go to the door outside of the doorway of the room that you're in and you look into the room, see the room and you really take the room in as it exists without you in it. And you just do this consistently until you keep closing your eyes. And every time you open the same images there, and then what you want to do is you want to kind of start to rapidly blink, blink very fast, um, because that helps with um, kind of like creating this flashing image of the room inside of your mind instead of like this solid stale image, because sometimes it's harder to envision a solid image in your mind. So when you when you blink your eyes really fast, it does that for you where like you start to see flashes of things even when your eyes are closed. Then you go into the room and when you sit in the room, you visualize your perspective from when you were standing outside of the doorway without you in the room. And that's how you remove yourself from the room vis in visualization while being in the room. That's how I do it. So that's a way of invisibility. Um, I was also sharing that adding things like Thurizas, Rune and Urus, Urus adds reinforcement and um, for those that aren't as great as visualizing but need more like tools, Urus reinforces like Algis, which is like the protective one. It adds endurance and strength to it. And then Thurizas adds a bit of self-defense and a bit of like um, consequence, if you will, for energies that do cross that boundary. Um, and the reason I suggest 30 Zoss and Urus is because also when you're working with protection energy and you're visualizing mental endurance and also um, being able to keep out mental distraction is a bit difficult. So those symbols kind of reinforce defense and strength and endurance with protection. So those are just a few of the things that I, I do. Um, and it, I got other things, but I want to just leave it there for now. Well, thank you so much. That was actually very helpful. I act, maybe we can do something, um, some other events about how to help you visualize better because that might be like a problem. I would love to support and like collaborate with you and other other teachers and other folks that are here. And I would love to like I'd even be willing to personally chat with folks that are having troubles if they need it because I just want to support and learn here. No, oh, thank um, you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, yes, you're right. I think visualization, um, things will be very helpful because because it's it's like it's so much easier said than done. And like really finding really like practical ways to like get yourself into it is sometimes not that easy to find um, when you're on the journey. And that's why I love um, I call it death meditation, which is what I call the whole visualizing your skeleton in your body. Because once you visualize your skeleton, you can then go inside of your skeleton and you can start to as you're breathing, you can feel how your like your diaphragm is expanding against your skeleton, against your ribs. And it takes you into what I like to call visceral awareness, which is like organ level awareness. And when you're working with your chakra bodies. It, that's really important because of how they connect to those systems. But that's that's more, we can do classes in the future about that. But yeah, I think visualization is such a huge foundation to all of this. So thank you for doing this class. You're welcome. Of course, we're here to help. And I really like your enthusiasm also about uh, want to help others. That's so special. And we love you for that. <laughs> I love y'all too. Yes, I'm so grateful <laughs> to have found this community. And I was invited to this community like a couple of weeks ago, but I've just been kind of being a watcher and a bystander to like the different chats and rooms and groups. And it's such a beautiful dimension and that is being created here. I'm so like excited about being a part of this community and a part of this 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 new world um, of like people that are on the similar journey and you know just people who are yeah. eternal students. I'm so grateful. Yeah. yeah, when I come here, I was like <laughs> crying. <laughs> yeah, I was like crying when I first joined here. I was like, 
whoa, there are people here who understand <laughs> what I'm going through. Yes. I was like, it, it can get lonely out there, but here we are a family, and we love each other, see each other, and we are together, and we will win this war. <laughs> we will win this Against war. Against the Arcos. <laughs> we yes. And also, <laughs> I just wanted to put a note out there that as I become more familiar and I become more active eventually, I would love to have a class where um, one of the things that I've been doing is reclaiming the systems like the Golden Dawn um, and different more elite exclusionary closed systems and practices, collecting knowledge about them. And one of the things that I've learned how to do is how to find which actual daemons of the Goetia and angel of the Stimham Thrash align with your actual cosmology based on the sign, the degree and the deacon. Like it gets very specific. And I think that would be a very useful class for people who are interested in working with angelic and um, demonic forces, both on the clefothic and tree of life. So I'd love to offer that as well to folks um, because I think it helps when people are hesitant or they're unsure of like, is this energy for me? Is this angel for me? Well, there's a system to find out which exactly forces are with you and for you based on your actual cosmology, your natal chart and things like that. Yeah, that's amazing. I am very excited for the future because we are moving, growing very fast, learning a lot. And I really like, like, I actually never heard people talk about that before, I think, in the server. So I will be very happy to join. A class like that in the future? I would love yeah. to. We got to collaborate. We just have to. It's, it's, <laughs> I just would love to. I would love, sure. love to. You know, I, really, I love... <laughs> it's like a bridge. I love it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think Elia also like to make some classes about also protecting yourself, claim reclaiming your energy, cutting cords maybe. So we are also excited about that. So... So it's not correct. Is that how you say your name? I'm sorry if I said it wrong. My English oh, is already um, not yeah, my name on, My actual name is So, oh. like Sophia, but my name on Oh, your name is Anoya. Sophia. Mm -hmm. Anoya is the name on the server thingy. Okay, nice to meet you, Sophia. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> I am Robbie. <laughs> By the way, you know, I really love doing uh, presentations because you can see the images there. Because I also had problems visualizing before, but right now I am better at it because like I am doing astral travels and stuff. You see a lot, you learn a lot. <laughs> it gets better by time, but I really love doing presentations like that because it helped me. You can't really learn unless yeah. you're actively participating. Like you have to apply the things to even get to the point where you understand it. It's like you absorb it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Normally, me and Alea were going to do like a practice on shields because we used to have like monthly shield work classes here, but then uh, the server got to clean up some stuff happened and like so many new people came. That's why I wanted to like teach people because there were so many people asking about it, don't know much about it. So instead of just coming here talking, I decided to do like a beginner friendly educational thing thank you so much elia yeah i mean i uh, tried to add lots of things because like everyone's shield can be different uh, based on whatever you feel most connected to your energy your ele elementals and stuff like that so it's very versatile and some people let many p many guys many guys many people inside their area shield but some people like to keep it very neat and clean and you know not every guide out there <laughs> is positive we also have we might also have some negative guides as well some guides might be dark because like all of us ha had like a dark past about something uh, but it's okay, like they can be dark but they can be still helping you towards your higher good for for your higher self so you you can welcome them but maybe if you're not ready you can also say like i do not want to let dark guides into my field like me i welcome my dark guides in as well i love that that's why i was mentioning the daemons too because some people also 
have a little bit of fear of like demons or de demons and things like that too. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, of course. I mean, there are some races of beings who seem darker. Like I am literally a vampire. <laughs> I have vampire uh, guides, like three actually, and um, but they're not evil. So, but still it can be challenging for someone to understand the difference of darkness and evil or maybe you are in this more yin path and you don't you don't really get a uh, connection with your yang so <laughs> by time it can change as well ultimately we all want balance yeah i mean if you want to go higher higher to 60 60 like you gotta balance the yin yang you know that's how you go higher uh, could you say more on how you use certain grids i guys sorry my mom came to my room so i had to close the microphone you ask how i use grids yeah like um like the flower of life and stuff yeah. like that uh i recently started using merkaba star actually and i just uh, i have a amethyst stone shaped like it also i wear it like a necklace and i just like imagine myself inside of a merkaba star in my shield like a layer of it and i imagine like it keeps moving around me. I just visualize all the different colors and lights uh, turn. And Merkaba star is actually kind of like a pyramid as well, like two pyramids. And it's actually so much stronger to make a pyramid instead of just making a bubble. Here's a resource for a book that talks about crystal grids as well. If anyone needs like literature. I got it from a spiritual shop near me and it's 25 bucks. But it, you probably could find a PDF online or something too. Yeah, if you guys want some books, I have some free PDF books in the library section. Yeah. And if there's a book that you are looking for, I might find it as well. <laughs> so you can DM me a book and I can maybe find it. <laughs> a PDF version. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And there's gonna, more question. Yep. I was gonna ask um like with the Merkaba star, is it because like is the pyramid stronger because is the energy directed in a certain like upwards motion or whatnot? I mean the shape it's and the way energy holds in it, like right. that's why different geometric shapes occur in the universe. It's how the energy reacts to it. So but you can use many different stuff. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I hope I'm uh, helpful. I am. This is my first shielding class. I'm usually known just like a jail lady because my real job is to jail the archons. <laughs> I mean, you're doing just fine. Oh, my, are you like astro police? Yeah, I am. Nice, <laughs> cool. I am so astro cool. police. You call nine nine nine. I come and I start jailing some bitch. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, lately I have been going on bigger missions, but it's my thing. Like this is that's how I joined the GFL. Uh, it was my first work ever in the GFL to become Astro Police, <laughs> and I love this so much. That's what I am known known for <laughs> generally: jailing archons. And if anyone wants a tour of the Astro Jail, I can give a tour <laughs> in the Astro. I love the jail. Also people who accidentally like astral project or accidentally end up in that space well we don't jail anyone like that only there are archons in the jail like evil reptilians no, not jail them, but like protect them from the archons what i didn't understand the question <laughs> Sorry. Oh, like sometimes people when they're sleeping or different yeah. things, they accidentally like astral project and they end yeah. up in this space that they don't know what it is and they need protection. So I was, I was like, do, oh. do you shield them as, as well? Because I know we're doing shielding. Well, um, I don't really do shielding in the astral much. I mostly do shields on myself in the astral, but and I do shielding on my home in my neighborhood and stuff. Like, I put literally rock golems in my home and in the street <laughs> to protect them around. And in the astral, uh, the places, there are places who are not, like, people are not really, like, we don't really, really let random people in. So those places are guarded by GFL guards. As a police, my job is mostly about capturing evil guys. <laughs> but oh, there are, see. like... Yeah, there are like guardians around and mm. it's just like humans um, want to go outside and they are not like a GFL member. They don't know much and they're like not really capable of protecting themselves. 
the guardians just stop them. You're not allowed to go like. Oh, so astral, like, okay, so astral police and astral guardians are a bit different. Oh, yeah, there are lots of different types. Like, there are guys, we call them like peace agents. They like wear like white uniforms and they're like secret spies. Yeah, they're like warriors who actually go fight in the, like a battlefield. But I don't really do much warrior stuff, but sometimes I have to. But I don't kill anyone. That's why I like work in the jail. You keep them contained. Yeah. I mean, jailing an archon is actually super satisfying work because you feel good. Like you don't, there's no guilt to it because you don't kill it. Like you don't harm it. You just uh, put them in this energy handcuff things. <laughs> and you like put them in this uh it's literally like a shipment you, you put them in like this box <laughs> and you just send them in the jail and in the jail they're just by themselves alone and they just stay there as long as they need to be which is like we give them chance to choose to heal they themselves have to choose to heal otherwise it don't work and if they choose to heal like they go in another jail which is like a rehabilitation center but it is not my job to heal them it is my job to jail them <laughs> and it is so fun <laughs> which is not easy either <laughs> i mean yeah i got so much super tiring for a long time but it was worth it it was fun um i have a question what happens if i don't child myself and i go to uh, astral protection what happens when you go to astral? astral yes uh, because i was in void state accidentally and my body was disconnected and i did i didn't know what is this so like well, when and i you're... never heard about okay you I asked never me heard about i never heard about um sir your voice cut off a little so i said i uh, this is why i understood like you what happens when you go to astral? Like you don't know what to do there. Is is that the question? No, uh, I was once in white state accidentally, but I didn't uh, astral project it. I didn't uh, shift it. You know, what I mean. Can you write the question, please? Because I am having a little hard time understanding because of the connection. I guess you're asking about shifting. No. Oh. Uh. Also, speaking of shifting, I'm sure some folks already know this, but yeah, me. <laughs> your emotions play such a huge role in dimensional shifting and being able to be centered and grounded. You were in void state once, accidentally, but you didn't do like as projection or shifting. Well, there are lots of different realms in the astral and or in dreams. So or or. There are also like in between states as well. So you might be just getting the one of them. Um, when right? you're in limbo, were you in? Well, it's okay. You can actually move uh, from the in between state to the dreams or the astral. Like sometimes, a couple times it happened to me. Especially if I if I want to go to astral to meet someone, sometimes I accidentally go find them in this like in between states <laughs> of a reality. But it's okay at the end. Oh, I was just going to say drinking teas or herbs that make you sleepy, but not n enough to knock you out, but to get yourself in the space of almost dozing out, um, that really helps, but not going to sleep. It helps you control slipping into that space. Um, it's almost like you want to get sleepy. You want to tire your mind enough, like be ready to doze off, but you want to slip into that space, but don't fully go to sleep. And it'll put you in an in-between state. And if you can consciously get yourself there with like different herbs um like lavender different calming things um you can better control where you go when you enter dream state or the astral it's almost like a terminal the in-between space like a train terminal and if you can control yourself getting in there you can do so much yeah. more with where you go yeah i mean you say like you want to make yourself almost fall asleep but you want to still make your consciousness and awareness like awake so you can be more conscious mm -hmm. and aware of your traveling and that's something i used to did a lot when i was working on like lucid dreaming and reality shifting and it was very uh, working great for me and i was also doing portals in lucid oh which you're, you're a lucid dreamer you try open a portal. You know, for me, when I open portals in lucid dream, it usually led me to another lucid dream. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, when I did reality shifting, I did actual reality shifting like 10 times. And almost every time 
it was so random. Like I also had like two DRs I wanted to visit, but I really I wasn't really successful at it. Like it was really much the first times of me getting spiritual and stuff. And I was not really successful at it at first because it can be really <laughs> challenging to do like an actual multiverse reality shifting. So I start asking help for my guides and my guardian angels. And I told them like, okay, I guess I'm not ready for this reality and what it brings. So, but I just want to see if I can do it. Just the reality shifting, not the DR. So I told them, just help me visit any reality. Like anywhere safe, anywhere just little fun. Just help me go there and let me see. And the first night I said that and did that, it was my first night ever doing actually reality shifting. And I went to this another reality where I was a ranch girl. <laughs> and I like stayed there for two days. Like it was so random. But I it it helped me see I can actually do it. It is something I can do. And it was actually fun. So I started to do random reality shiftings. I went to so many random places. In one of them I was like a ghost ghostbuster. <laughs> And every one of them, I didn't pick consciously. I just said to my guides, like, like you choose for me. You choose for me. <laughs> and every time, it was just a little visit for me. I stay, I was staying the, in the places like two days max. Like, there was maximum. In some of them, I just stayed for a couple hours. But every time, it was super fun. In one of them, I was a mermaid. <laughs> and I am not really connected to water. Like, I am not really like a Mintaka serious girly. I am more like an Orion rock mage girly. <laughs> so it isn't something I would choose, but still, it was very, very fun. So I just focused on the having fun part and it worked. Yeah, when you want to really go to one special place, it can be kind of toxic, actually. Uh, I mean, I am not saying, like, I don't know about your DR and I I, do, I am not, like, saying, oh, yours is toxic or stuff. You get it, girl. I am saying like it can be toxic because you might get obsessed over it, which is not very healthy for you. So that's why your guides might be like stopping you from doing it as well. That's so true. It can be unhealthy. Any yeah. any type of attachment to a specific outcome can be very dangerous in spiritual work. Oh, and if people wanted to know how to make themselves sleepy without any herbs or anything, just force yourself to yawn and just keep doing it. <laughs> If you can get yourself to yawn on purpose and you just keep doing it, your mind will just start to tire itself. And then it's just a non, you don't need any drugs, anything, or anything or any herbs or anything outside of yourself to do it. You just got to make yourself keep yawning. You know, something I used to do also when I was just about to fall asleep, I used to like put my two fingers on the pillow and I would just slightly tap it with my fingers as i am falling asleep so while i am focusing on that like it keeps my mind busy my consciousness aware so while that's my almost like einstein's do you did you ever heard of einstein's spoon uh technique where he would doze off and hold a spoon in his hand and like when the spoon would touch the plate he would like go into a trance and he would be able to oh. control like his um lucid dreaming and that sounds like that that's so dope that's so genius oh yeah that sounds similar it's actually not something i made up by the way i learned it on internet by someone that i don't even remember <laughs> but shout out to that person that we don't know his name <laughs> i think i heard about einstein doing it on tiktok <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, probably learned on YouTube. Yes. I think it's supposed to be Nikola Tesla that did that with the spoon. Oh, or not okay. Salvador Dali, I think. <laughs> yeah, just some other geniuses that we yeah, use their the thing for reality. Kind of <laughs> interesting <laughs> technique. But they definitely, they all knew about like astral projection and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, especially about Nikola Tesla, I think I heard a lot like he was a reality shifter and he like astro projector and he was getting like information from other dimensions and places and bringing mm -hmm. them here oh yes it was i think in nicola that i that i heard it about on tiktok with, with the spoon specifically yeah one of them genius doesn't matter <laughs> thank you we will use your thing for reality shifting <laughs> also humming interestingly yeah. enough really does calm the mind like finding different ways to like create a repetitive humming harmony um like up and down like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just keep on doing that over and over and eventually like your mind will get tired and then yeah 
it helps too humming <laughs> up and down humming you know what i also used to do i used to do lots of like uh, rea uh, reality checks with my hands that was also like very popular thing people used to talk about doing when they were trying like lucid and stuff looking at your hands counting your fingers and like tapping to your palms with your fingers and like saying like a reality check i am awake or whatever i remember lots of people were doing that back in the day back in my day when people were talking about reality shifting for the first time <laughs> i sound so old right now like it was like three years ago by the way guys uh we're going to finish this class and give a little break and after that we're going to play gartic phone which is something we used to play a lot it's like a drawing game it's very fun and we will chat there as well and if anyone has a personal question that they don't want to share with the group they can always dm me and i will try my best to help if you need anyone in the jail i am the girly you come <laughs> if you want like a blocker device thingies on some evil people to block their energy you know who to call this alien lady <laughs> rabbi i don't know if you watch um television or not but there's this new show that just came out this year it's called domino day and it's basically a it's a uk based show and it's about this this girl this young lady who is a very powerful witch but um the nature of her witch powers are almost like that of like a succubus because she draws power from like um of, like sucking in the life force of like other thing other people and beings and she mm -hmm. does it through like kissing them and it's almost like vampiric succubus powerful sorceress energy and i think you probably resonate with that character a lot it's called domino day but i didn't hear it because i don't really much watch much tv mm -hmm. and it's probably not in my country i am turkish uh, but thank you you can actually write that in the movie section or drop a link if you want that sounds actually very interesting um i might check and maybe some other people might be interested as well and if you guys don't have any more questions i am ending the event and i will be see you guys seeing you guys if anyone want to join the game events we will play games and chat together in 45 minutes <laughs> okay thank you Dom domino day yeah thank so it's not you. Like you said you don't want to go to hell jail after that she's still here i mean going to the soul jail is for you know really evil beings so <laughs> you probably won't be there as long as you're not like these evil archons like if you're not working with them you won't really be going there i mean if you still think that you have stuff to work on you will still incarnate like you you still have so much time here to heal and learn but if you still think like there are, there's going to be stuff that you need to work on still you can always incarnate again learn again since you learn and heal and you know rise up soul jail is for really 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 evil beings that we almost have no hope that they will ever heal so very corrupted people are there. And when you're in the soul jail, you, you still have so much... I mean, I'm not saying like when you are in the soul jail. When someone is in the soul jail, we give them so much time and chances to heal. So much time. <laughs> There's always hope to heal and change and learn. How does time work there? In the soul jail, there is time. So it is not... It's not like the regular soul realm while there is no time. There, I mean, it is kind of different because it there is time. I mean, there is still even time in the astral, but it's not in like a straight line or same as here. You're welcome, guys. See you guys in the gaming event or next month in the other <laughs> other shielding event. Love you all. See you later. So where did everyone go? I guess everyone used their invisibility bubble. <laughs> it's soul gender. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like Burger King is so touchy. Have you seen their foodish? That's not real meat. You can't tell me otherwise. They definitely like so gray. Bam, bam. On gelato, foreign corn swerving pajos. Bad bitch, she from Chicago. She freaky, she gon' bust it. Cause fuck, I'm lusty. <laughs> Wanna hit her back. Backward smoking is fat. Dressing like I got a shake. I pull up, jumped at the back.
Bad bitch in her ass fat. I always stay with the sass. I'm always late with the fashion. She gave me an L, that's fantastic. Saw the green light. Can't hide now. When you go where I go. Smoking on gelato. Foreign cars swerving potholes. Go where I go. Smoking on gelato. Foreign cars swerving potholes. Andy. That bitch call me this. Jam perk and an Addy. I really wanna fuck a Kardashian. He kicking shit like it was rug. Go where I go. Smoking on gelato. Foreign cars swerving potholes. Bad bitch, she from Chicago. Freaky, she gon' bust. Sick as fuck, I'm lost. Andy. Come on, where are you? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. The money go where I go. Smoking on gelato. Foreign cars, swerving piles. Bad bitch, she from Chicago. She freak if she gon' bust. She thick as fuck, I'm lust. I got her from my cousin. Fuck that. I wanna hit from the back. Back with smoking is fat. Trashing like I got a sack. I pull up, jump to the back. Bad bitch in her ass fat. For the coupe, got a hatch. On the sands of my crash deck, bitches got ass, expensive glasses like I'm teaching class, too fresh to take out the trash, fresh to death from my casket, I always stay with assassins, I'm always late with the fashion, teacher give me L, that's fantastic. <laughs> Don't look at the tag, baby. I bought her ass, but I'm going to tab. I drive in a jack daily. Had to upgrade to a Mercedes. Thanks. We all enjoyed. Thanks. The concert, bro. Mm -hmm. You should have deafened. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was looking. I don't mind. Because you know why? I didn't see that happen. Oh, the recording. I mean, Again. where was the podcast, Andy? Where was the podcast? Yeah, it is. There's it no is. Recording. I checked. I okay, checked. Yeah. Oh, it's still recording. Oh, yeah, you're right. She did. She was so nervous. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but it was like painful. Painful to look. That's why you have editing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I was like, ugh, come on, come on, you can yeah. do it. Come on. I mean, even even in the editing, like you still it's still a little bit awkward. Not only so. that, her like shyness, like it spread it on the people because they were like afraid <laughs> to speak up. It. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> not tell me it's not true. No, you repress. So when you do a shadow work meditation, you you tend to like go deep inside yourself and though because once you when you're younger and get these shadows you're money go 